Hello, this is a wikidot.com tutorial for creating an account, creating a website and making a few changes to that website. First you want to direct your browser to wikidot.com and find the create account link up here. You want to decide on your username, which is what people will know you by. And my real username is Liga, so I'll use that as a base just for this example. Uh, you can choose your language, which will be what your website's error message is shown in, either English or Polish. Your website's content, which you write, can be in any language you want. Uh, there's no limitation to that. And at the moment, they're beta testing other languages. So, for example, you could have your error messages in Serbian or um, a different version of English or whatever you want. Um, but the only 100% supported languages for error messages at the moment are English and Polish. Now, you can choose your own password. The more complicated it is, the harder it is for others to guess, so I'd recommend using capital letters, lowercase letters, numbers and symbols like exclamation marks, just a mix between the two. As long as it's something that is difficult for others to remember and easy for you to remember. If these words end up being hard to see, click the refresh button to get a new challenge. Now if I did anything wrong there, error messages would have popped up, but it seems I've done everything right. So I can close this window and I'll appear back here. And I have an email from Wikidot. So open up your inbox, open up the email, and click on this link to activate your account. and this is taking a while usually doesn't take this long ok here we go I'll just close this one because it's a copy now and I'll leave that open just in case oh yeah and you'll get another email saying welcome to wikidot.com now my name is Liga here well, my name is Lego YouTube. So, if I wanted to change that image, for example, I could go, I could find an alternate image on Google. Just say horses will do. Just say I like that one. Now I can go to my account account summary scroll down to my profile my buddy icon or avatar download from existing web location or you can upload from the computer if you want copy and paste that in there just be careful if the image is copyrighted that could be a problem so um, if you're getting one from the web I'm not actually doing it now but it's, it's a good idea to check if the image is copyrighted before you use it ok so I'll just confirm that that says my buddy icon has been changed but it won't appear up there immediately it might take a while for it to come appear in the cache Okay, so here I am. Just say there's a website I want to create. I'm back at the home page. I might want to create a website at, say, legoyoutube.wikidot.com. That would be my web address. So I'll type that in there and I'll click get it now. It'll ask me some more details. I can give a tagline if I want. Um, it'll ask me to confirm the web address as a title, so I can say, it's my um, example website for tutorial or you could say it's a gaming wiki or your blog or whatever you want to make on here uh, choose the language set an access policy 
Now open means anyone can view and become a member. So if you put it, you can put a button on your website and they can click that button and they will automatically become a member. If you have it as closed, it's similar to open, but they must apply first and you must accept the um, application. If it's private, that means only you can view the website and only when you're signed in. So that's a good idea for anything that is sort of business related that you don't want to show to other people or if it's a website that you're still building and you don't want to show it to the public just yet. So I'll just do an open website just for this case. You should read the terms of service again and tick that. And it will automatically take you back to your new website. So you can see the title example website for tutorial as I said. And the web address is Liga YouTube at wikidot.com. So exactly what I typed in. Now you've got a couple of links, useful links up here. The most important one is your site manager. Now if I click on this, it takes me to my I've got my website, but it also takes me to the admin manage page. Now if for example, I'll go back here. This is where you manage all your site. If for example you remove that link, all you need to do is type in admin manage up here and you can still get to it. You don't need that link in the side. It's just a lot easier to have it there. So for example, if you you might want to show not want to show that link to your visitors. So you might leave the link there while you're building the website and remove it later. Now for example we can what can we do with this website? We can change the theme. So if we go down to appearance and themes, because I don't really like this theme that it's using now. You can choose a built-in theme. And just say we want a shiny, for example, and save changes. Now if I go back to the home page, you can see that the theme has changed and the, the appearance has changed and it looks a lot better. Now there's another way you can do this. You can get user contributor to themes. If I open a new tab and I go to themes .wiki.com, I can see a list of free Wikidot themes from other Wikidot users. One of my favourites is this one. So I'll open this up, you click on the picture. You want to go down to how to install and you want to copy this link. Go back to your site manager. Appearance, themes and use an external theme and type it in here. Now there is a more up to date, there's a more recommended way of doing themes but because that is slightly more difficult I'll put that into a separate video. This is the easiest way to do a theme it just means that you cannot modify that theme later so I'll, I'll create a separate video just for themes later on but for this case we'll just put it this, we'll just do it this way. You can always change it later. So I'll save changes And then I'll go and have a look at my web page again. And you can see that yet again the theme's changed. Now, this is your main web page. At the moment you can't really see any difference, but if I go to the start page, you'll find out that nothing changes. This is actually the start page is where your home page is. When people visit your website, if they just type in Liga, if they just type in your web address like that they will automatically appear at the start page. So what you want to do is, this is the main page that everyone's going to see, so you want to scroll down to the bottom and click on edit and put whatever content there that you want everyone to see when they first visit the website. So for example it's the home page and you can say welcome, can't type, and save. I just use a shortcut there, wait a second I'll do go through that again. I press Control and S which is a shortcut to save the page but you can also click down here to the save button or you can or type in a short description of changes so I'll type in my name and my just changes was added name to the end. So you don't need to do that but I'll show you how it's helpful later on. If I click on the save and 
and it's taking a while. Here we go. Now, every single every single change you make is recorded in the history. So if I go to the history of the page, it'll show me when I first created the page, the first time when I edited it, which was deleted all of that text and put it in, put in the words "Welcome to my corner of the internet," and then this this one number two which is actually the third in the list, is when I added that on the end. And you can see the comments added name to the end. Now if you have hundreds of these revisions, the comments make it very easy to see what changed without actually manually looking at the view, the changes and the source code. So if you have these comments, it's very helpful if you want to go back and uh, revert a change that you made or find out when you made a certain change. And you can filter it and change how many per pages and that kind of thing. I'll go into all these other details, all these other links later. Now, you might want to change this menu up here. That is on the nav top page by default. You can change this, you can change these page names to whatever you want later, but I'm not going to go through that in this video. Now we want the nav top page. And you click on edit. And This is the syntax that you use. I'll go. Through, I might go through this later. But just say you want. Let's let's just. We'll just change this. Do all this. I'll go to this. This is my start page, and just say I want to call that home, and I want. So I am doing it wrong. So you link to your start page there. and Google there. It's just whatever you want to put as your links. You can link to other pages there if you want instead, other pages in your website. But if I click on home, it'll take me back to my home page where it says welcome to my corner of the internet. If I click on Google, it'll take me to Google search instead. So exactly what I asked it to do. Just quickly show you that source code again. And you can pause the video if you want to. See, I can to view the source code without actually editing the page, I can go to options page source. And that is exactly what I typed in. An asterisk followed by a space and then this link syntax for Wikidoc. Now that's the nav top page. If I want to edit this sidebar, it's nav side. Very self explanatory. And I can edit and delete a few things because I don't like having all these all over the place. So you'll leave one of them there. We'll leave it for that. Just to keep it a bit simpler. But you can change it to whatever you want. Go back to the home page. And you can see that I've minimised it. There's, le there's less stuff there. Now, if I, what, there's an added new page box here. What you can do is you can create a new page. So for example, just say you want to write horses. We'll do horses again. Just say you want to create a page about horses. You can say, type in horses and click on new page. And save. Now you will notice that this is your website's address plus the horses page. So if I go back to home, you can't you can't seemingly access that page. You can manually type in horses if you want, and you'll get there. But another way would be to put a link somewhere else. So for example, I could go into navtop, I can add another link here. my horses page and I can save it. And now if I click on the horses page link, it takes me there. Now another way to do this is you can put it into the page itself, not in the menu. So for example I could type in, now this is a shorthand syntax, you can firstly do this, 
this is what I've been doing before to go to the horses page but you can also do it using three buckets so if you know that if you just want to enter the horses the page name you can do that and that will also work or if you want to do custom text use a pipe symbol and do that that's just a quick way for doing links inside your site if you want to do Google link to Google you have to use this full link syntax or and you need to use the full link syntax for any other website other than your own now you will see there's three links here that one was one where I just typed the three the three blackness on each side and the word horses so it just uses the same thing here's the custom text and that's the full link that I typed in with my whole URL in there okay what did I just do okay you'll see that all these all link to the same page they link to your horses page so you can create links to different pages wherever it makes sense on your website okay now the last thing I'm going to show you is how to upload files if you go to your page you can click the files link upload from your computer select files refresh the file list and here's your link so I can right click that and copy link it will be slightly different text depending on which browser you're using I'm using Google Chrome but if you're using Firefox or Internet Explorer it might be slightly different then I can go to edit and I can use the image button type in the URL or you can also do an attached file and it'll give you a list of all the pictures on your page but this is in general if you're using an image from a different site or you can just type in the URL directly click on insert code there it is click on save and now you can see the picture and that is a spaceship in case you're wondering <laughs> okay Thanks for watching my video and I hope you enjoyed it.